Welcome to the Wyoming Women's Business Center's Business Education Webinar se Series. Today's presentation is Internal Marketing. What is it and why should you start? My name is Jessica Brower and I'm the Marketing Director at the Wyoming Women's Business Center and I will be your speaker today. Before we get started, I want to point out the Zoom control panel likely on the bottom of your screen. I wanna call attention to both the questions and the chat function. If you have any comments or questions during the webinar today, I'd like you to use those to communicate with me. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent out to all the registrants shortly after the live event today. You can also visit our website at www.wyomingwomen.org and navigate to the training tab to view all upcoming webinars as well as past webinar recordings. So if you're watching with this live, a survey will launch shortly after we close the presentation. If you could, please complete that survey as it provides us and our funding partners with valuable information. And just as a reminder, all participants are muted to minimize any background noise. So once again, if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, please don't hesitate to type those into the chat box or questions panel. Before I get started with this afternoon's presentation, we're gonna go over just some quick information about the WWBC. So I'd like to start by introducing you to the WWBC. We are a nonprofit organization whose mission is to enable and empower Wyoming entrepreneurs with a special emphasis on women. We do that through three distinct programs. The first is our business training and counseling program, which is always free. The second is our microloan program, which offers loans from $500 to $50,000 for businesses that have been denied from a traditional lending source. And third is the Artist Development Center that we run in conjunction with the Works of Wyoming store in downtown Laramie. And what I really want to get across to you is that we specialize in micro enterprises. So you may be wondering, what is a micro enterprise? A micro enterprise is a business that has less than six employees. The majority, majority are one or two person businesses or solopreneurs. And these businesses were able to launch for under $35,000. Businesses like yoga studios, hairstylists, in-home daycare providers, marketing consultants, cleaning services, photographers, these are examples of our clients. So if you're not already a client of the WWBC and you'd like to be, it's quick and easy. You can sign up by going to wyomingwomen.org and clicking on that sign up now button at the top of the page. Or if you'd rather contact us, you'll find some contact information at the end of this presentation. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start by launching a quick poll. So this is just a question about internal marketing. So when it comes to internal marketing, there's three options. One, I'm familiar with internal marketing, but I've never implemented it in my business. Two, I've used internal marketing strategies in my business before. Or three, I'm totally unfamiliar and that's why I'm here. So I'll give you just a few moments to answer this. Awesome. So it looks like we have a pretty good spread here. Some of you are familiar and some of you are not. So let's go ahead and dive into it. What we're gonna talk about here over the next few moments is three things. What is internal marketing? Second, what is the impact? And three, how do I start? And in this last section, we'll go over some examples um, in real businesses where you might see this. And then we'll have some time for questions if you have any. So first off, what is internal marketing? Internal marketing is the promotion of a company's objectives, products, and services to employees within the organization. The purpose is to increase employee engagement with the company's goals and fostering brand advocacy. So internal marketing really varies based on the size of a business. Typically in big corporations, it's something that's managed and implemented through an HR department. Well, here we are, we're talking about solo entrepreneurs and micro enterprises. Likely you don't have an HR department, you are the HR department. So what it looks like more for us as small businesses is just communicating to your partners and your staff about what it is that you're doing as a business, what your goals are, what your vision is. 
and communicating in a clear and concise way inside your organization in the same way that you're communicating clear and concisely in marketing outside your organization in trying to attract new clients or partnerships or people to collaborate with. So really all internal marketing is, is the marketing you're probably familiar with, things like advertisements, communicating with the press, letting the public know about what you're doing and just flipping that inside out and focusing it on telling the story and attracting um, your employees to your business um, through internal communications. So I love this quote from Richard Branson, who perhaps you've heard of in the news lately, we're going to space. Um, Clients do not come first, employees come first. If you take care of your employees, they will take care of the clients. I feel like this is probably one of those philosophies that um, you know we all have different approaches to, but I do think it's really important to remember how you're communicating with your employees and not just focusing on how you're communicating with your clients, because ultimately your employees are continuing to communicate with your clients. They're spreading the word about your business. They're probably the biggest brand advocates for you, whether you're selling a product or you have a service or you're an organization that's trying to get a mission out there into your community. So some common internal marketing efforts are things like acknowledging employee efforts and successes. So this could be internal and external. So sometimes you see people posting on their Facebook pages about their employees and celebrating their wins, celebrating their birthdays or, or sharing some news about them. It also would be acknowledging their efforts and successes inside of your business, letting them know when you're proud of them, when you're impressed by them, when you notice that they're working hard, that they went above and beyond. Um, it's kind of like that employee of the month concept. Um, but you know, we want it to be genuine. I think we can assign employee of the month titles. And that doesn't mean that we're actually communicating in a very respectful and appreciative way. So that's one way. Next, is educating employees about the company's products and or services. So this is more kind of um, brass tacks kind of internal marketing, but that's letting your employees know what it is that they're selling, letting them become familiar with it and empowering them to know what they're talking about, um, providing the necessary education they need in order to work with it or sell it. I think this is hugely important. Fostering a pleasant work environment. Um, how, how are you making your space a comfortable space for your employees? Are they feeling like they can come to work and not be harassed or that they can engage in the business and feel um, like they belong there? Just like we attract customers by letting them know that they belong with our brand, that they're one of us, that we see them and we have a problem that we want to solve for them and they're, they're, we're all in it together, we want the exact same thing in the workplace. And with that comes listening to employee input. So you're not just talking at your employees, you're not just shooting them messages all the time, but you're engaging in conversation. You're responding the same way that you're answering client emails or you're uh, responding to reviews on Yelp or you're answering questions on Facebook. You're listening and you're respectfully responding to your employees too. And chances are they probably have some great ideas that could help your business grow. You're providing professional development and growth opportunities. So you know that you want them to continue to grow in whatever they're doing. Maybe you have somebody who's doing marketing for you. And so you're able to provide them with some training with another organization in order to up their skills in digital marketing. Or you, know, you send them to a conference where they can connect with people and learn more about a certain tool. This is a thing that will help them um, feel more empowered in your business and also will upgrade their skill set. Um, meaning they're going to do better work for you and they're going to likely be more excited, not feel like they're stuck in kind of the same old job. Encouraging what work-life balance. So much like fostering a pleasant work environment, this is, um, you know, <laughs> connecting to your employees as human beings, not just as workhorses, making sure that they're feeling well taken care of, that they're doing okay. I think this has been huge in the last 
year that we've had. Um, I, and I think, I think it always needed to be necessary. And I think we're starting to have more conversations about it now, which I'm personally very excited about. And another example is incentivize goals and benchmarks. So maybe you start a program when your business where you're incentivizing your employees to sell a certain amount of products or to reach a certain goal. Maybe this is an individual, maybe this is as a team, but then you just have a mission that you're working to together. And then at the end of it, when they reach the goal that comes with celebration of that goal, maybe there's something that the staff gets to do. Um, you know, it's gonna look different business to business, but it's just a way to cre create some camaraderie around a goal and incentivize people to um, put their best foot forward and work for the business. So what's the impact of these kinds of internal marketing efforts? Really, there's many impacts. It encourages employees to perform. So they feel empowered, they feel respected, they feel connected to their job. So they're going to do a better job. They're going to want to do it. It empowers employees by giving them accountability and responsibility. So they know that they are seen as a asset to the business that they're working for. So they're going to keep working and they're going to work well. They're going to connect to clients from a space of empowerment and understanding. And they're going to take your goals as a business owner and they're going to become their goals too. It creates a common understanding of organizational goals and strategies. This just creates that teamwork, that camaraderie around an idea. You're working together. You all have a joint mission, you're connected to that, that is huge. Places value on the employee's contribution to the company. Just like I've said before, they know that they're doing good work, they know it's appreciated and it's seen. I think just knowing that your work is seen and respected is huge. It improves employee development and customer retention. If customers are engaging with employees who are happy, who are educated, who are you know, coming to work uh, and doing their best, um, they're gonna stay customers. We've all had awful customer service experience. Um, and many of those times, maybe it's because that employee was miserable. Maybe they didn't have good leadership. Maybe they didn't feel respected in their job. So they didn't really care about how they spoke to customers. And so maybe they lost a customer because of that. Information flows effectively between different departments with effective communication. Um, you're just able to talk to each other. <laughs> just like in effective marketing, you're able to get the, the message out there to your customers. With effective internal marketing, you're able to spread information within your company without any stumbling blocks. And employees understand, understand the expectations place them. So you're communicating about what the goals are, how you're measuring that, and you're working together. So how do I start? This is no different than starting with a marketing plan for any other kind of marketing effort. So I put this YouTube thing here because I think it's most important for you to look at how you create a marketing plan. And there's lots of presentations that I've done in the past on the WWBC YouTube that are gonna dive into this. So we're gonna talk about it a little bit, but if you want more about how to get started on creating marketing, then I suggest popping over to YouTube and seeing that. So how do I start? One, know your audience. If you watch any of those videos on YouTube, you'll probably hear me say that every time. <laughs> we wanna know who we're talking to. So for you, your audience is your employees. What are they doing for you? What do their lives look like? How are they working full-time or part-time? Are they a hired consultant? So they have many other clients. Um, how, how does work fit into their day? Do they have a family at home? Do they have other jobs? Have they been affected by um, the recent happenings in the pandemic? That seems like a silly question. I think we've all been affected by it, but knowing that is really important. Second, you know who they are, so you can determine what your objective is. So some examples of some ob objectives, we're gonna get into some examples here in just a second, but some other ones are, maybe you're trying to familiarize your employees with a new approach to offering your service or a line of products. So maybe you, you're shifting how you're um, selling a product or you're selling a new product. And so you need to get your employees rallied around that and trained to do it in a new way. 
Maybe your objective is to move through a transition in operations or ownership. Maybe there's a name change in the business. Maybe um, something has changed. Maybe you've changed locations. And so you need to communicate to your customers something that's happening differently. First off, you need to communicate to your employees how you're going to move through that. How are you going to be consistent? How are you going to make it go as smoothly as possible? Maybe you're troubleshooting or brainstorming storming as a business shifts to meet customer needs. So this is a thing we all know of in the last year. Maybe all of a sudden you have to do delivery service or you have to do a, a grab and go service or you're selling more online than in person. These are big shifts. And so you need everybody on board, but you need to figure out how to do it. So these are just a few goals to kind of think about how you could start. Next, you make your objective known. So whatever that objective is, you communicate it. You let people know. You let them know, hey, we need to troubleshoot and I really value your opinion. Let's dig into this. Or we're doing this new thing. It's going to be a little bit different. Let's move through this so we all feel confident before we have to answer customer questions. Next, you're going to implement clear and concise messaging. So you're, however that looks. Maybe that's through a training document. Maybe that's through some in-person training. Maybe that's a combination of things. But ultimately, you're going to figure out just like how you create clear and concise marketing, you're going to do clear and concise messaging inside of your business. And then lastly, you're going to evaluate and adjust. You're going to see how it goes, and you're going to make adjust adjustments next time. These things are always fluid experiences. So let's get into some scenarios. So let's say I'm a salon owner and I need to diversify my salon's income with product and retail offerings. So what would my internal marketing initiative be? Maybe as a salon owner, I give my employees products at cost or offer a free product in order for them to become familiar and better lead clients to the right products based on experience. So I'm letting them purchase these shampoos or hairsprays or brushes. And so they have experience with them. And then when they're offering a service to a client, they can say, oh my gosh, I've been using this hairspray. It's incredible. You have to buy it. All of a sudden they become better salespeople for you. Another example, I'm a yoga studio owner and I want my yoga studio to be known for its exemplary teachers and quality class offerings. So Maybe my effort is I'm going to subsidize continuing education courses to ensure that my teachers are growing in their skill set and offering a quality service. So maybe I help them pay for or I pay for them to take a course on anatomy or a new kind of um, yoga philosophy. And so therefore, they're broadening their education, they're becoming better in their craft, and we get to offer that to the community. Another option. So I'm a boutique owner and sales at my boutique are declining and I'd like to explore adding new inventory that my customers are excited to buy. So maybe I host a monthly staff meeting to discuss ideas for upcoming inventory. I'm listening to the opinions of my employees. I'm letting them bring new ideas to the table and help them grow the business offerings. It's we're working together. I'm valuing them as experienced um, customer service representatives for my business. And I'm not just telling them, this is what we're going to sell. Now go do it. They get to have skin in the game, which ultimately I think we all want. Lastly, maybe I need my employees to be on their best game as we navigate a tough and lengthy project. Maybe this is something you're thinking about right now as we're dealing with the pandemic and the uncertainties of what business looks like. So as an office manager, Maybe I work with my staff to offer a flexible work environment or a flexible schedule that meets the needs of my employees wherever they're at. Maybe I explore offering an employee fitness program or providing a culture that supports mental health. Um, so allowing mental health days or resources for support. Maybe I provide childcare support. This is gonna look different based on what your employees um, needs look like. And that's exactly why step one of implementing this is knowing who your audience is. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hop into some questions if you have any. So while you pop those into the questions um, panel, I'm going to go over just a little bit of partner information. So the Wyoming Women's Business Center is made possible through several partnership agencies. The center's primary funding comes from the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Wyoming Business Council. 
We're so thankful for their support and guidance and look forward to the work ahead. As promised, here's some contact information. On the left, you'll find information for Jonathan Howdyshell, our business counselor, who you can reach out to at that information. And on the right is my information. If you have any questions about what we talked about today or anything in regards to presentations I've offered before. If you enjoyed this webinar, we have lots of topics coming up. Remember to visit our website to register for those. So wyomingwomen.org and click on the training tab. They're always free. So up next, we have 10 tips for managing a hybrid team and ready to start a business. Additionally, we're starting a facilitated dream builder course where you'll go through a six week course um, building a business plan. And this starts on September 7th. I'm gonna go ahead and see if we have any questions. Oops, doesn't look like we have any questions. So if anything pops up, you are of course, of course are welcome to shoot me an email. As I said, when I close the webinar today, a survey is going to pop up. It's just a quick six question survey. And I ask that you stay online and complete it. We read each of these and it helps us plan our upcoming calendar and improve our offerings to best serve you. Thank you again for attending this afternoon on what could have been your lunch hour. I look forward to seeing you again here soon.